Okay, so here we are with the final file. Uh, so I want to point something is that if you remember in the in the last um, maybe not chapter but maybe the last video um, I, I introduced you to this uh, atmosphere and bloom and uh, here what I did is that instead of uh, keeping them in the compositing stage I move them upward because uh, I still want to have uh, um, the possibility to act on them afterward. So here they are on top of everything, almost on top of everything. And I'm um, going to remove those layers, those layer groups. So um, in, th in this stage, what I do is that I keep my my ID pass because it's still very valuable to have it in here to make uh, quick selections. I flattened everything in the compositing stage, but uh, those uh, atmosphere and bloom layers. And I use it as my base. So if you watch my tutorial about uh, um, turn your 3D photo bashing images into painting, You'll, uh, you'll have an, a better understanding of the process and uh, if you didn't uh, I encourage you to, to watch this because I'm not going to cover twice uh, uh, in detail uh, these techniques but um, what I'm going to show there is by using and you'll see that what you'll see that anyway in the, in the full process but um, by using external softwares which are dedicated to, to create painterly textures from a source, uh, you now have the, the uh, possibility to turn this uh, photo bashing, uh, 3D photo bashing thing into a painting. And, and you also, which is beautiful in these techniques, is that you can also try different uh, brushwork design, you can explore uh, or you want to to make you your brushwork to to look and you you're not uh, you, you're not binded to just your your painting skills and your your painting uh, brush etc you, you you really can go whatever way you want you can turn this into a watercolor you can turn this into something definitely more more experimental if you want if you want you, you have a lot of options so what I did here, I just brought this level adjustment and uh, for some reason, ah, okay, okay, I remember. Um, okay, this compositing is just something I, I kept for myself, which is the flattened version. Um, containing the atmosphere and bloom layers but it's just here for reference, I don't really use it. So what I'm going to use instead is really this, is really this layer, the generator. And I call it the generator because this is the source information that I'm going to send to, to an external software, which in that case is a studio artist. And the studio artist is going to use that as a source to generate various um, various painting textures. So once again, if you if you have the time, just take a look at, at my tutorial about uh, turning your your 3D uh, photo bashes into painting, where I'm I'm going into uh, specific details, technical details of on uh, how to use uh, these tools and uh, and various others, because in fact you're not bound to use a specific tool. You know, even if you wanted to play, and I'm doing that a lot, you'll see it. You'll see me doing this in a, the specific tutorial uh, with the native filters of Photoshop. You can you can do a lot of different things. And uh, mm. you don't you don't specially have to go for, for those tools. Those tools are great to generate certain look, but uh, I would say, at the moment when you're going to go for 
kind of a detailed illustration. The tools that you're using are, doesn't really matter because we are not going to really see you, the brushwork. We are not going to see in detail the texture. So uh, it's more about controlling your edges, controlling, controlling the sharpness of the different area of your, uh, of your image. Um, and, and I try in this uh, tutorial to use a minimum amount of tools. And, and I, I'll uh, introduce them uh, later, later on, uh, maybe more specifically. So, uh, let's see what I did. Um, okay. So, in this um, specific um, folder, if I remove the mask, you'll see that there is two layers. And in fact, I, I try to remember what I did. Um, I, I, I use almost the, the first one. So the first, this base layer, I'm going to copy it several times later on and, you, and use it at, at uh, some other point. Uh, so this one is kind of a, of a rough painting pass. So it's going to be useful, for example, in area where I don't want to have sharp details. I really want to blur, for example, some edges or some texture. Uh, you know, or bring some nice painterly texture at some places. I can use this this uh, this pass, and uh, this one is more about bringing back some some high details into the painting. So as you'll see, it's it's not very usable for flat areas. You, you see the textures that it bring it flat areas. It cry. It it really sells the. It really shows that it's something procedural. So that's really something that you have to use with a, a lot of caution. And what I did here, see the difference, sharp, and it may immediately look uh, painterly. It's just to apply uh, this texture to the edges. And this is where it comes very handy to have um, an edge pass rendered in, uh, in Keyshot. As I shown you before, here it is. It's an edge pass with a, with the tune uh, with the tune material, and uh, this edge pass is very useful to to isolate only the um, the edges. And uh, the other thing that I that I did to to isolate all the details is to use the um, the, the um, okay, let me show that. The Photoshop filters you have very useful filter for selecting edges, which is um, styled as the glowing edge. So there is a, an edge detection algorithm, and uh, you know it, it's a plane of colors, but it doesn't matter because you can can remove those colors later on. So using this filter, you can quickly do an edge pass turn it in black and white, and uh, copy paste it into, um, into a mask, and it will become your, uh, your edge pass. And uh, you'll see me work a bit more on this edge patch with, uh, with the dodge tool. Using carefully the dodge tool, you can, you can break a bit more luminosity on the edges you really, you really want to isolate. So this is uh, basically uh, what I did. And you, you show me uh, do that in the, in the full process. You'll see me, excuse me, you'll see me do that in the, in the full process. And now I can just do Control A, Control C, create a mask in whatever area, uh, whatever layer I want to have that in Control V inside of the mask. And now I have my my edge pass. So let me delete that. So this is this is all I. This is how I, I did this uh, this edge uh, layer, this edge uh, layer mask.
So now it's like very systematic, very procedural, but it's a good base to start. So now I'm going to, to start to refine, work more on the highlights. And each of those layers, I, I, I can't really give you recipes. It's, it's really part of the creative process. You know, I, I can't, I can't um, think about what, what I, I, I need to add. For example, is there any detail in the highlights here? If I want to bring back details specifically in the highlights, I'm going to try to isolate from my generator here that specific information and apply a filter on top of it so it doesn't look uh, CG. And it could be, once again, any filter uh, from the Photoshop gallery or from any external tool. And, uh, and I apply that here, you see, in light on mode. If I'm duplicating that, putting 100% in normal mode. And uh, in that instance, this is uh, just a plain uh, Photoshop filter that I applied on top of it and which adds this kind of brush strokes on highlights. I think this is, um, if I remember correctly, it's a paint dobs filter. Yes, that you can tweak, choose different, uh, different uh, type of strokes. It's, it's really about just playing with filters and, uh, and try to anticipate of the, on the, uh, <coughs> the use that you can have of such, of such a render. And uh, obviously, this pass uh, put on a, on a lighten layer will immediately bring me just a, a, few, a few details where I need it. Okay, highlight. Okay, just bringing some more definition, as you can see, at some places. And second, painting in a mask to reveal the, the layer. So you can go as I did. If you really want to know what a layer looks like, you can duplicate it, fill the, the layer with white. Don't delete it, because in that case, it's going to, to remove all the information that are, that are masked and uh, put it on normal, 100%. Okay, so in that case, it sees my generator pass, uh, maybe with a bit of a, of a spatter filter on top of it to break a bit of the edges. This is why it brings that, uh, that much definition. Okay, blurring that area, which is too sharp, too noisy. Dissolve. Ah, this one, it's the first time I, I use it, but uh, it comes handy because I wanted, here it is, I wanted in some area to, to bring a bit of that noisy texture around the edges, just to soften the edges, and so I use just the dissolve layer to do that. And I think I did the same here. Just with a, a cloud here, yeah. filter, uh, render, cloud, just a mask. And uh, what what this one did because in here pretty much everywhere you have the same value underneath than in the layer. The dissolve layer won't do anything. So I put it at a hundred percent. You see when I remove the mask, uh, what it does is that it only affects, almost only affects the edges, blurring the image, but it blur it in a way where it's still uh, painterly. Okay, 20%. So most of the time I found that if you look at all master paintings, uh, they very rarely use uh, very sharp edges. The, what you could find as the sharpest edges in, a, in an old master painting is usually 
way more blurry than the edges we we use to incorporate in a, in our uh, digital paintings. So this is why I tried here to really soften the edge. Same again. Soften the edges and and add a bit of diffusion. So this one looks like a very super super subtle adjustment just to fix some some textures and some parts. Um, the other day I remember what I did here, but uh, I have to. Oh yeah, 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 I remember. Okay, I'm going to show you that because this is a super super useful thing that I'm I'm doing all the time. Very useful technique, and I'm I'm introducing that in more details in my my other tutorials. In my other tutorial, excuse me. Uh, you'll see in a few spots. So let me show that show that to you. Con Control Shift Alt E to uh, copy copy merge past. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the good layer. Uh, I take my generator layer. Control G to duplicate. Put it on top. Put that layer at one percent fill. So basically, it's almost empty. I'm creating an empty layer under it, and now I'm going to merge Control E. To merge down and you will see that this layer is empty but it's not it it contains all of the informations of the painting of the generator layer uh, at one percent fill so at what percent fill it's it's invisible but now if you switch to your mixer brush and uh, you use uh, one of those uh, wonderful a mixer brush presets uh, that I'm going to give you the the address right after that. Okay, square check. You can remove the sample all layers, which is a huge gain of time, and more important, you can paint not from the actual underneath information, but from the one person fill information that you have on that layer. You see, it's immediately going to pick the correct, the correct values, the correct colors, because of that 1% fill. So to work on your edges or to bring a painterly texture or eventually at some point to bring back some details because you're not happy with, see? It's a really, really, cool, uh, really cool thing to do. So this is what this layer does. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to those um, to those mixer brush presets in the chapter that is going to cover the external tools. So here it is. Um, okay, focus pass. Okay, so here I'm just bringing, I guess, some of my original uh, render um, composite pass. See to to bring some details in a in area worth of focus, like in here. Okay. So get that base layer. Okay, that so that base layer I I I show you before, which is here, and um, I just copied it. It's a it's a rough layer. Here again it is. So it's a, it's a, um, the right moment here now that everything looks looks almost uh, sharp again. It's the right moment to to bring back uh, some of that on some of that uh, loose painterly quality, especially on on edges that connect and that could uh, create uh, potential uh, tangents. So here it's it's a lot about breaking edges, as you can see. See. Breaking edges around the border of the frame, and these are very tiny adjustments, but they they really help to 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 make uh, this image uh, this image look like a painting. 
Okay, this is another filter that I use, which is a Topaz Simplify. And what what Topaz Simplify does, uh, as uh, as it uh, as its name is very obvious, it simplifies the image. So it, it's a it's a good very very good filter to simplify your texture to to remove some some annoying um, noise if you need to, and uh, it can even bring some really nice textures. You see, maybe I, I should bring some more of that nice texture here in the fur, for example, because right now it looks uh, too much noisy. I think this is a, not an, an area of, a, of a focus and uh, there is too much noisy here. I might uh, bring that uh, stylized texture later on. So <clears throat> this is it for the procedural painting layer. And now in those fine adjustment, you'll find those uh, two atmosphere and blooms uh, folders that uh, I show you uh, before in the other part. I also corrected the values because there was a kind of an issue with that uh, fabric. You know, uh, it's not it's not possible that by transparency, um, her skin look actually brighter than than uh, the, her skin underneath the toga looks brighter than her, her skin here even though it's kind of the same value it's what it was annoying me i, I wanted to have something just uh, that looks a bit more believable tiny tweak so here just an overall color correction Here it is, and uh, the surface FX layer it was just for fun. I I kind of like what it brings, but it's some in some places it it's really too noisy. It, it's annoying. I, I especially think about the background wall. It's, it's very noisy. Uh, I, I really don't like that. So I might have to remove some of that in the in the background. But uh, what I wanted to do is in uh, these um, steps is just for fun, just to emulate. And if you see some of the, of my work, you know, I, I know I love to make uh, my images look like if they were done with another medium. And I really wanted to emulate that uh, canvas quality that you see on uh, on old paintings. 